Hi guys, this is Jason here from the Nathaniel School of Music and here's a tip on intervals and how to use your ears to recognize them. Now intervals are powerful tools in music. They help you build your melody, they help you add emotion to it and they also are building blocks for your harmony. So you would need to use it for almost everything you do as a composer. So <clears throat> To identify an interval, usually I go with <clears throat> asking myself the following questions. Does it sound resolved? Does the sound feel like it's resolved? Or does it feel like it's tense? Or does it feel like it's uh, uneasy? So using that concept, when you hear an interval, for example, when you hear a, a perfect fifth, It sounds calm in comparison with, let's say, a diminished fifth or a minor second. Diminished fifth, which is a dissonance, minor second. And uh, you also have your major third. And that's where you could make a distinction between the major third and the perfect fifth sound. Both are, uh, are both of them are intervals which are resolved, but the major third gives you an added emotion, which uh, which is generally positive and happy, bright and all that. Whereas the perfect fifth is usually something which doesn't really contain an emotion. So. This is the perfect fifth and this is the major third and similarly you also have a resolved emotion but on the darker side that's the minor third so that's generally the first thing I do if I hear two notes I ask myself the question does it sound resolved or does it sound tense or does it sound wrong or dissonant and again there's nothing wrong about a dissonant interval it's just that your ears need to figure out how to detect it and then your mind has to figure out how to use it in the song you're writing so the next decision you take uh, if the interval is neither tense nor resolved it could be an interval which wants to go somewhere or it could be a sound which doesn't sound very stable it wants to go to something else which is stable like a perfect fifth or a major third and these are intervals which I would call an anticipation interval so for instance the major second the perfect fourth the minor seventh or the dominant seventh and so on. You also have an interval which is the sixth interval, the major sixth and the minor sixth, which I think can be used for many things. You can use it as an anticipation. It's also a very unique sound. It's, it's very mysterious when you play a minor sixth. Uh, and also you could use it as a resolution. So in just to summarize the intervals which are usually resolved are the perfect fifth the major third and the minor third the intervals which sound dissonant are the minor second diminished fifth and the major and the major seventh but um, in music you're not going to always just play the dissonant intervals together. You're going to add it perhaps with something which sounds resolved. So immediately when you, when you add a third along with a major seventh, it gives you a major seventh chord, which is not very tense in my opinion. It's not very dissonant. So when you combine intervals together, <clears throat> it adds different colors to your music. And um, the intervals which sound like they want to go somewhere. The second, major second, 
the fourth which is also used as part of the suspended chord the dominant seventh which usually wants to go go back to the sixth and then you have the mysterious sounds the minor sixth and the major sixth which have their own uses they have a lot of uses actually so to practice intervals well there are lots of websites out there and a lot of ear training applications out there which are which are amazing uh, they really do the job but my suggestions are to try and play and try and play more with your bandmates try and play with more people and listen to more music i think by doing that automatically your grasp on intervals improves so i would suggest um two things one thing you could do with a friend you and a friend you could play piano and your friend could maybe guess intervals you could ask someone to guess it or he can play and then you could guess that and if you don't have anyone you know uh, practicing with you um you could always do it in the dark which i find quite useful you could either put off the lights or else maybe just close your eyes and just play two notes uh, and since the piano is not a very pattern based instrument it when you close your eyes you can get lost especially if you play with one finger so just to demonstrate that with my left hand i could perhaps play one key and with the right hand you could just play another random key and by hearing this sound you know it doesn't sound very stable and very resolved so you could guess that it's probably a dissonant interval and it's a major 7 hope you guys found that tutorial useful for more uh, tips and for more for more concepts of ear training we have a ear training course at nathaniel and uh, we do it in fairly regular batches do check out our website nathanielschool.com and check out the syllabus and looking forward to catch you there